is an exciting day in golf today. It's a beautiful April morning. We are here and they are firing up three different stat mills. There's a lot of history attached with this mill and we are going to watch it with everyone else. We hear it's going to be loud, so hence my earplugs. operates you'll notice it it only lifts up about an inch and a half or so so anything bigger than that ain't going to grind it so that's basically how that thing works and uh i'll talk about the eyes this is the actuator arm right here that comes off in the centric then we have this is the molar here m-o-l-l-a-r it's a it's a shoe a big shoe and then underneath that is the die the crushing the crushing plate right here now what they did is they put mercury in here the mercury, the mercury challenge in there that, that captures the gold. How, why they did that was they'd get the gold and come over the top of that dam and the mercury would catch it and it would be absorbed by the mercury. The only thing I can't figure out, and I try to talk to people about these, nobody knows anything about these mills, but I try to find out how the heck did they get the mercury out of there? Because it's down in this well down here, down in here, and it's a paste by the time you get ready to take it out, it's a paste, it's no longer liquid. So how do you get it out of there? The only thing I can figure, they took this thing out to the test site, they go ahead, do their thing, take it apart, when they took it apart, they take the mercury out and process it. That's the only thing I can figure. If anybody's got another answer, please let me know. This is the original mill that was set up at the Gold Queen Mine over Soledad, Soledad Mountains, over in California over here. And I have a picture of it that was taken back in the early 30s. They actually had this crusher, it was on top of the mill didn't make any sense to me. Miners like to have things go downhill. Maybe they were just so concentrated on that, they had to put the crusher on top. I would have left the crusher on the ground like this and they have a little conveyor to take it up to the top and dump it into the ore bed behind here. I don't know, figure it out. And again, I tried to talk to people. I called the people at the Gold Queen Mine. By the way, the Gold Queen Mine is an operation. It's a silver and gold mine. It's more silver than it is gold. And I talked to the people there. Nobody knew anything about it. They didn't even know it was there. So this thing was, was purchased back in the early 90s, brought out here, reassembled. This is all the original timbers. The thing behind here is the ore bin, and there's a little chute that comes out. We put that chute on there to feed the material in the back of the box. Now, what we do is we start out with this small crusher over here, a toy I call it, and we'll go ahead and get it going. Put the jaw crush up there, very less climatic than that. Only one jaw moves. It only moves about a half inch. There you, go ahead. you can see it's not very fast. But it does the job. It beats a hammer. But anyway, that's how the how the crusher works. And uh, again, it was a test mill. They get pieces, stuff to put through the mill, crush it down and see how that make it how it works. And then it comes out the chute and into the into the, the gyratory crusher. Okay, if everybody's ready, we'll go ahead and start the crush up and get some crushing action. Go for it. As you can see, it's not burst shattering. This is the only one I know of in the U.S.
least three guys who deserted and ran off in the night and escaped. And they sent a detachment and rode one of the mules through the night and caught up to him at Port Katy and arrested them. And they all went to a military stockade for uh, desertion and for theft of government property. So these shoes are all fabricated in factories back east. They're the left and the right are essentially the same. And uh, you can put it on either foot. And after you wear them a while, they kind of stretch. They're all leather. They call it load. They get their load. They're going to tear this open. Like that. And the powder comes out. Like this. They would be pouring that in the barrel. All the powder comes out. And you tear the rest of this off. bullet looks like that. You stick the bullet in and ram it down with the ramrod. The ramrod comes out, put it down in all the way, the back, and then they would give you the command with this half cock. Oops, I dropped the bullet. This is a 58 caliber. For the Civil War, they went to this Manet ball, which is a rifle barrel. The ball, the back of the ball, they call it a ball, but it's really a conical bullet. It's hollow, and when they shoot, it expands and it fits into the rifle. They get two advantages. One, you have a rifle barrel, and two, you don't have to use a patch, which makes it very hard to ramrod the ball down. If you shoot a traditional muzzle loader, no, it's really hard to get that ball started. These, it, it almost drops in the barrel. There was Fort Katie outside Barstow, and then uh, Camp Rock Spring. They had a, they called it a redoubt at Marl. They never really had any troops stationed there, but they would maybe spend the night there on their way. And then uh, Fort Paiute. Well, we've had an awesome day at golf today. We got to see three stamp mills in operation, so that was a special thrill. And as always, thank you for following us on the Desert Way, and we'll see you on our next adventure. Mm -hmm.